If your beer quality feels inconsistent, but you keep tweaking the recipe, you're solving the wrong problem. Your recipe isn't broken, it's just unsupported. And until you set clear targets and tolerances, you're just guessing. Well today, I'm going to show you how to fix that. In this episode, I'm going to give you the system I use with professional brewers around the world to make their beer more consistent, their process dialed in, and their recipes finally shine in the way they were meant to. We're unlocking the missing link between great beer and reliable beer, because once you get this dialed in, your brew days are going to get easier, your beer's going to get better, and if you've got a team, your team's going to stop asking what they need to do next. So if you're serious about brewing quality beer, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next episode because this episode is for brewers who want to raise the bar and not just hope for better beer. Let's get brewing. G'day brewers, welcome to the Quality Focus Pro Brewers podcast. My name is Hendo and I am a pro brewer coach from the Rockstar Brewer Academy. I love my job. I get to work with brewers from all over the world, implement the quality systems they need to make world-class beer. Today, I wanted to talk about something that I think is a real mind shift as far as the mindset of a professional brewer goes. A lot of brewers approach me and they always ask me that they want to get in control of their beer consistency. So what we're going to talk about today is how to gain control over your brewing process by setting clear targets and tolerances right across your entire brewing process. So if you want to stop second guessing your quality and build a quality system that scales, this episode is for you because this is something that you should apply to not only one brand of beer that you might brew and one batch of beer that you might brew, but every brand of every batch that you brew needs to turn out absolutely amazing when you are exchanging beer for money. The truth is that your recipe is probably already great. I've seen lots of beer recipes, not only from the members of the Rockstar Brewer Academy community, but in my time, in my previous life as a brewery consultant and as the head brewer of a contract brewery, I've seen all the beer recipes out there. And I tell you what, they're all good. They're all going to make pretty good beer. But the thing that I learned early on is that the magic happens when you give your attention to the process and the structure of how your beer is made. And that's what really makes it shine. What we're going to cover today is three things. Firstly, we're going to talk about what targets and tolerances are, as well as what the the concept of being on spec means from a professional brewer's perspective. The second thing we're going to talk about today is the difference between accuracy and precision. I see these words thrown around so much and we're going to get to the bottom of that and we're going to work out why both of them matter. Finally, we created your targets and tolerances for different quality parameters in your brewery, how to apply those to everyday brewing decisions via a tool that I use called the Wall of Wisdom. And I'm going to show you how brewing beer in your brewery should just be as simple as just driving down the freeway. I used to be a brewer that used to keep tweaking every batch and I was very frustrated by the inconsistencies. Now, I'd made the mistake that a lot of brewers very commonly make is that when they want to make quality improvements to the beer, they go and tweak the recipe. And usually that manifests itself in such a way like, oh, I don't have enough hop aroma in this beer. I'll just add more hops. And you can see what's going to happen here is that you're chasing your tail with regards to not having clearly defined quality targets in your brewery. Because if you say something as broad as I want more hop aroma in that beer, then when is going to be enough? hop aroma in that beer, right? When is going to be too much hop aroma in that beer? And so it's very common for a pro brewer to fall into the trap, particularly if they're a home brewer that's turned professional, to think, to make the mistake that tweaking your recipe is the way that's going to give you quality improvements to your beer. But here's the thing, that couldn't be further from the truth because it was basically the lack of defined targets I ultimately realized that was stopping me from getting my beers to 
reach their full potential, okay? And what I did was basically I decided to set targets and tolerances around a lot of the key metrics in the brewing process, not just the wort and not just the beer, but everything in between. And what happened was basically my process became smoothed out and I stopped firefighting and I stopped chasing my tail trying to tweak the recipe. And so this episode's about that shift from guessing to knowing what you need to do in your brewery. Because often your recipe is not broken, it's just not supported by the right numbers, okay? So here's the thing, without a target, you're just hoping that your beer turns out well. Because if you're a brewer who's constantly adjusting your formulation and you're changing your beer based on the taste or the feel of it, you're missing the point. Quality, as I've said in past episodes, is defined through two lenses and they're called fit for use and true to brand. Fit for use is really simple. It's basically anything you can measure with an instrument, gravity, pH, carbonation, temperature, color, haze, alcohol, bitterness. There's instruments out there that measure those numbers and they're called fit for use. Anything that's measured with an instrument, it makes a number, it's called fit for use. And then the other lens is true to brand, which is basically a written description of what a beer is supposed to look like, what it's supposed to smell like, what it's supposed to taste like, and what it's supposed to feel like. Because you need both, because it is possible for you to hit all the numbers in a beer and for it to be absolutely fit for use. But if it's a diacetyl bomb, does is it a quality beer? No, it's not. And that's why you also need true to brand. Let's dial in on fit for use numbers for a second, okay? So when you measure something that makes a number, measure something with an instrument that makes a number, you need to know in advance what the target for that number that you're expecting is going to be. Gravity is a really simple one. Lots of brewers focus so much on brew day and hitting their OG number. Cool, that's right, that's target. But the other thing that's missing is what's called a tolerance, okay? Because it's absolutely impossible for you to perfectly hit your OG on your brew day every day. What a tolerance is, is how much variation is okay from the target before quality starts to be impacted in some way. And so that's why I use the concept of on spec, okay? So when you hear me say on spec, what that means is that you're within the tolerance of the target that you set. Let me give you an example of that. Let's say I'm brewing a beer and the OG target on this brew day is 1056, 1.056. My, in my typical breweries that I work with, we usually set a tolerance of one specific gravity point or 0.2 Plato if you're using freedom units. And so if I'm aiming for 1056 and I get 1056 and a half, cool, on spec. If I get 1055 and 1055.3, cool, on spec, okay? But if I get 1057.2, that's not on spec and I need to take some corrective action. In this case, because the gravity is slightly over, I might consider diluting my work a little bit to bring it back within that range that's considered to be on spec, right? So for every metric that you measure in your brewery, being on spec is the key, okay? And you need to define that for every metric of every beer that you brew. And that gives you a clear target of where you're going. And so the thing is, right, is that your beer might taste great one day, but the real win as a professional brewer goes is knowing that you can make that win happen every single batch of that same beer that you make without guessing. That's consistency, okay? Now, let's talk about accuracy versus precision, all right? So we know about targets, we know about tolerances. Now let's talk about how we actually measure and aim for those targets and tolerances. So the thing is, is that you can be getting reliable numbers, but actually hitting, but actually not being on spec. Now, case in point that I see very often in breweries is pH meters. Now, pH meters are very delicate instruments that we use in breweries which are very rugged environments. I see so many brewers misuse their pH meter simply by not calibrating it frequently enough. Some brewers say to me, oh, I, I say, do you calibrate your pH meter? They go, yeah, of course, I do it every week. And I'm like, every week? And that's not frequent enough because what's going to happen is because the pH meter is so delicate it's prone to skew off even though the ph meter might be one of those fancy ones that tells you when it needs to be calibrated 
they can actually skew off in a direction you don't want. So imagine you're a brewer who only calibrates their pH meter once per week and it's skewing off and you don't know and right throughout that week you're taking pH measurements in your brewery and then realizing that by the time you get to the end of that week that the actual data that your pH meter is telling you isn't the reality, the true value of what's happening in the samples that you're taking. That can really mess things up. So the important thing is that you need to understand the difference between accuracy and precision. And I see these two words get misused so much, okay? So accuracy, if we think about a sample, let's use pH. Let's say we have a sample, it's a wort sample, and we're aiming for a target of 5.20 as a pH target for this wort sample, okay? Let's call 5.20 the true value of this, of the wort sample that we've got. Accuracy is how close my instrument gets to true value, okay? And so if I have a pH meter that's reading a sample where its true value is 5.2 and it's hitting 5 point, and it's telling you 5.4, well, you're making quality decisions based on erroneous information. And so being, so how an instrument tells you how close it is to its true value is what is considered to be accuracy. Precision, on the other hand, is how close the measurement that you take is against other measurements of the same sample with the same piece of equipment. So you might take this pH reading 20 times and you're going to wind up with these tiny little variances as you take each of these samples of the same, the same wort sample. Now, you know that the true value is 5.2, but sometimes you're going to get 5.24, sometimes you're going to get 5.18, 5.27, and so on. Precision is how close the measurements are to each other. Okay. Now, this also comes into play how many significant digits an instrument that you might be using has. So a pH meter typically has three significant digits, five, two, zero, okay? And when it comes to something like your like scales in your brewery, okay? If you think about the scales that you use to measure out grain, are they the same set of scales that you're going to use to measure out salts or hops? The answer is no because your grain scales don't have the precision that your hops or, or salt scales are going to have. The key thing that you need to understand here is to understand the difference between accuracy and precision, and then finally ensure that you calibrate your equipment and you have reliable SOPs in your brewery so that you're always getting accurate and precise readings, right? Because otherwise you just can't trust your data that you're, you receive and it's very difficult for you to, to be able to make quality decisions about your beer. Otherwise, what's going to happen is if your measurement equipment, your measurement instruments are lying to you, you, there's no way you can ever dial in a recipe. It's really simple. Okay. Now, the third thing is you've got to basically collect all of these targets and tolerances that you have about a particular beer or all your beers and have them somewhere that's easily accessible. A really common mistake that I see is when someone is making a batch of beer that they make frequently, they go refer to past batch logs to see what the target was. The mistake that's going to happen is that if things change and you're going to document the changes as they happen, your beer is going to skew off into an unknown direction over time. You need to have a plan and clearly document what your targets and your tolerances are. And when you have a plan for your beer and its production process, it's like driving a car down the freeway, okay? Now, if you're a brewer who obsesses over dry hop choices or the malt that you're using or anything like that while you're ignoring things like the right pH and gravity and carbonation and you haven't documented what those numbers should be and they weren't working out that they're all over the place you're looking at the wrong problem so whilst you're trying to drive a car down the road what you fail to do is you fail to build the freeway and to put the lane markings in so that the cars can drive smoothly down the freeway and if you're someone who consistently obsesses over what hop combos should I use to make the quality of this beer better 
instead of painting the lane markings in order to get to that destination reliably, you're obsessing over what color the car should be. As a good professional brewer, instead of obsessing about what color your car should be, you should obsess about making sure that you've built the freeway and had the lane markings going where you need it to go because that's how you wind up with consistent beer. And you do that by setting targets, setting acceptable tolerances in your brewery, and then measuring every single stage of the process. So when you're setting targets, it's not just about work and beer. As we've spoken on about in past episodes, we in the Rockstar Brewer Academy, we use a tool called a product specification, and it documents what the beer is supposed to look like right the way through its production process. It's not just word specs and beer specs. You break down your production process right now into different phases. You have a fermentation phase, you have a diacetyl rest phase, you have you might chill the beer down, you might carbonate the beer, ready it for production. At every single point, the beer is going to look like something and you need to know exactly what that beer is going to look like. And that's what setting a lot of targets is about. And then the other tool that we use at the Rockstar Brewer Academy is we build a wall of wisdom, okay? So your wall of wisdom includes all of your word specs, all of your beer specs, all of your yeast strains, times and temperatures and go no go tests and all that sort of stuff so that the actual way in which you make the beer is very clearly written and it sits on the wall in your brewery so you're not flicking through old batch notes what are looking for that answer that you're desperately trying to find it's fast it's reliable and all you have to do as a professional brewer is simply follow the bouncing ball and amazing beer happens it is so cool but the other cool thing that goes on your wall of wisdom is what's called your brewery standard tolerances you measure lots of things in your brewery, gravity, temperature, pH, carbonation, and there might be things that you don't have capability of, which is okay. It might be, you might be a brewery who can't measure business, or you can't measure carbonation, or you don't have a DO meter. That's okay. But what things you do have the capability of measuring, you need to actually write what the tolerances are. How much out can these things be before quality starts to be impacted? And straight away, if you're finding yourself in a situation where you're not on spec instantaneously, you can go and take corrective action and go and fix that beer because there's nothing worse than getting to the point where you're tasting the beer at the tap room or at the bright tank or something like that and it's not how you wanted it to be because by the time it gets to that point, it's too late to take any corrective action. So the point I'm trying to make here is that your hop combo doesn't really matter. I'm sure it's already great, okay? But what you do need to do is you need to build a plan on how to get there. Now, if you've been nodding along so far thinking, yeah, that's me, my beer is great, but I can't seem to get it to really reach its full potential, then maybe I've got something that can help you take the guesswork out of it. I've got the five-step pro brewer quality checklist and it's completely free. Inside, you'll find the exact five systems that every pro brewer needs to brew consistently high quality beer. Not just now and then, not just once off, but every single batch of every single brand that you brew. And you can grab it right now at rockstarbrewer.com forward slash checklist, or if you're watching on YouTube, you can scan the QR code that's on the screen now. Just use it to put some structure around your brewing because your recipe is already awesome. We're just going to make it reliable too. Trying to brew great beer without defined targets is like trying to shoot bullseyes in the dark. It's never going to happen. So you need to turn the lights on, set the bullseye, dial it in and check where your shots land and then over time take corrective action to tighten things up so you're always hitting the bullseye. That's what being on spec is all about. And when you do that, you might be surprised to find that your existing recipe is already awesome and it's already hitting the mark. You just weren't seeing it clearly. So what you've got to do is write down the critical targets just start with one of your brands make it your top selling brand write down what the targets are write the waves through the production process not just work but during the production process and also the finished beer abvs gravities pressures temperatures carbonations all that sort of stuff write it down and then define for all the different types of measurements you make what's an acceptable margin of error and if you're not sure what that what good looks like or if you don't know where to start Grab the, the Pro Brewer Quality Checklist, or you can book a calibration call with me if you want to have a chat to me about how to implement these systems, because I know your beer already has huge potential. You just need to unlock it.
If this episode ignited a spark, then you should check out this episode next. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next episode.